Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the His Word is Way broadcast, where the Word of God is the final authority. I am your host, Pastor Seiko Woods. Today is Thursday, January the 19th, 2012. This is Real Talk Thursday, where we deal with real issues, but from a biblical perspective. Glad to have you joining us tonight. Glad to be here with the saints of God. Thanking those who are uh, joining us on the phone lines. Those will be here in the chat room, and we'll be listening uh, in the future on the archive. We have a great show tonight. Uh, not only a great show, but a controversial uh, show. Don't expect a lot of people to be listening to this particular broadcast tonight because of the particular issue that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, and most likely, most people don't listen to our broadcast because of what we talk about is not always popular. And what we deal with forces and challenges people to think. And not just to think, but to think biblically. And, and, and I think that's the problem with most uh, Christians today, is that we don't use our brains. We don't use that gray matter that God has given us to think and to think biblically, soberly, uh, righteously, in, in ways of making decisions that will honor and glorify God. But, of course, I have someone that is able to help us to think biblically. This is my co-host, partner in crime, no felonies. Brother Alfonso Neal, what's happening, bro? What's going on, Pastor Wood? Thanks to God. Uh, definitely blessing to be here, man. You know how we always say, man, you, you love uh, you love to, to, to have these topics, man, where people don't like me. You love to start some stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's just the elephant in the room, man. It's the elephant in the yeah. room. And what am I supposed to do? Put the duck tuck tail and run? I mean, I'm going to deal with it, bro. I mean, nah, that's, why, that's you, why you're here. I'm not mad at you, bro. I'm not mad at you. That's why I'm here, man. I got your back, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, we're going to fight this together, man. You know, any, any controversial topic you bring up or I bring up, we're going to fight it to the end biblically, man. So I, I love it. That's right. You know? That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, again, we're like not, I said, we're not here to please the world, man. We're here to please God. We're not here to please the world. So we got to tell ourselves yeah, well, that. I can say, you're, not, you're not going to be in popular company, man. You know, you you, you, you rolling with the with the, with the with the renegade, dude. So uh, into many, into many uh, invitations you'll be getting. To speak a lot of places, Doc. So uh, yeah, your, exactly. your your influence is gonna be uh kind of kind of shabby and kind of limited. So, but hey, Amen. you know what? We here, God like you said, we here to please God, Doc. So we are here to serve an audience Amen. of one. And um, Amen. we don't do th- We don't do this, you know, for uh, the fame. We're not trying to make a name for ourselves. You know, if, if if the exposure comes, it comes because God is sovereign, and His providence uh, is 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 the uh, is the means of how we are able to do what we do. But hey. Well, we got three people or 30. It doesn't matter. You know, some people want to um, uh, level or, or want to say that success is based on numbers. That's not always the case. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. you, know you want to have people in your room. You want to have people on your show listening in and all that kind of stuff. It has its place. But if we're doing what we're doing, man, for the for the sake of trying to, you know, get a crowd and to get a lot of people to come and listen to the show, I maybe mean, we're doing it for the yeah. wrong reasons. And so, um, you know, again, we're not we're not trying to push people away. If people come to our broadcast, they come because they know what we're talking about. They know what we're about. They know we're not going to be, uh, you know, pulling in any punches, and we're not going to be hedging behind the issues. We're going to deal with issues because that's how we are able to grow, and that's how we're able to, you know, challenge each other to think biblically. So and that's why we call the show Real Talk Thursday. We deal with real issues, but from a biblical perspective. And so tonight is no different. Tonight is no different, bro. And so we're going to tackle this issue, and we're going to deal with it uh, uh, biblically and prayerfully that uh, – you know, uh, people lay down their their emotions and, and get their you know their feelings off their shoulders, man, and just use their brains and just think think biblically, think things through, yeah. you know, uh, um, you know, objectively. So again, um, uh, thanking those who are who are here tonight. We want to uh, ask that God will bless our time. So uh, let's just jump right in. Let's pray, and uh, we will uh, we will get get right into the topic of tonight's uh, discussion tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, God, for this opportunity that we are here. Uh, another day, another another opportunity, God, to give you glory and honor and praise. And, Lord, we are only by your grace are able to do what we are doing today. And so, Father, we want to acknowledge your power. We want to acknowledge your wisdom and your, your plan and purpose for our life. That every day that you allow us to see, oh God, is because you have work for us to do. And until that day comes, oh God, when we lay lay down and take our last breath, or until you call us home. We want to be busy doing the work of the kingdom. And, Lord, we know that uh, dealing with uh, issues that are um, 
controversial and, and dealing with issues, oh God, that will force us to think biblically and, and to presenting truth. Lord, it is not an easy thing. And, and Father, we know that um, talking about topics and, and issues, oh God, that people don't want to deal with will cause those, oh Lord, to misunderstand uh, us, misrepresent us, uh, malign us. Father, it comes with the uh, it comes with the package. And Father, you said that all of us who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. We're not looking for it. Father, we're not going to um, make excuses, O oh Lord, when we are faced uh, with persecution, either on our jobs and our families and our communities and our relationships. Father, we want to be faithful to you and to you alone. And for those, O oh God, who come because of, of what we're doing for your kingdom work, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you would strengthen them, that you would keep them loyal to your word first, O oh God, and then to your people. Father, we know, Lord, that we're living in the last days, and since we're living in the last days, Lord, that people are not, will not endure sound doctrine. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they are going to accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own lust. Lord, let it not be said for those of us who are here tonight on this show and on the call and in the chat room and who will be listening in the archives. Lord, let it not be said of any of us who desire to seek truth that we compromise the message, that we compromise truth for the sake of popularity and opinion. Father, help us, Lord, all of us desire to please you in all things. And, Father, let your name be glorified and honored as we tackle this issue and subject regarding the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Father, we don't know, uh, Lord, his eternal uh, state, but, Father, you know. But, Father, you've given us your word at the plumb line. You've given us your spirit uh, to discern truth from error. And, Lord, we ask, God, based on the information that we have, that we use your word, the scriptures, Lord, to discern and to uh, make an understanding a conclusion for those of us, Lord, who are uh, here, that we want, oh God, to have our people informed. And let us be informed, oh God, by your truth. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We are um, here on tonight talking about this issue. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Julia, we, we called it. Um, is Martin Luther King Jr. a Christian? Is Martin Luther King Jr. a Christian? And I'm, I'm, um, I have a guest that I'm going to be bringing in on the show uh, tonight. Um, this, this brother, I've been knowing him since 2007. Uh, actually, uh, met him through stand-up ministry, and he and I had just basically hit off um, the, the first few hours that we had talked. Uh, he lives in Nebraska, and um, he, his name is Miguel Soto. Uh, he's a he's a brother in the Lord, uh, faithful brother in the Lord. Loves God, loves His people, loves His word. And uh, we were talking about this issue uh, just a couple of days ago. And uh, he jokingly told me that, man, man, you're gonna be getting yourself in a lot of trouble. Kind of like what you just said, Fonzie. But you know, <laughs> I, I'm not looking for it, but I'm not gonna run when you know when when truth is at stake. So I want to bring yeah, brother Miguel. I want to bring brother Miguel Soto in. Brother Miguel, welcome to the broadcast, man. Thank you. Can you hear me good? Can you? I can hear you loud and clear, brother. Loud and clear. Okay. What's going on, brother hey. Miguel? How are you? You're doing pretty good, man. Well, man. Man, listen. I yeah, know you only got a little. I know you got a few minutes of your time, and I, I know you got a lot all that snow out there to shovel and everything. <laughs> so I don't want to take too much of your time away. But uh, I wanted to first of all just thank you, man, for uh, you know for the for accepting our invitation to to come on the show and to uh, to talk about this issue. Um, regarding the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. I know a lot of people are not going to like what we say, um, whether right. good or bad, um, but we want to give a, a balanced view uh, to this issue. So let me just ask you this, Miguel. Um, do you have any uh, any stake in this issue uh, regarding what you uh, want to share with the audience tonight? Is there any, any personal vendetta? Anything that, that we haven't talked really personally, uh, you know, as as far as no, what you're going to be, you know, no, we, giving me. No, we uh, we we never talked about this before, and um, the book that I'm going to be quoting uh, from, I came across this. Oh gosh, I don't know how many years ago, maybe four or five years ago or so, and mm -hmm. um, I was I was surprised to find out some of the things that um, Martin Luther King Jr. believed because uh, they appeared to be very contrary to uh, 
biblical Christianity. And I know when 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 folks have that reverent title, doesn't necessarily mean that they're uh, preaching biblical doctrine. But I I really have lost count of uh, the times that I've heard people say how uh, much of a man of God he was, and and you know this sort of thing. And when I looked at the book, I you know it really it uh, some of the some of the things I read in there shocked me because I just like you said I think there are a lot of people that don't want to talk about this because I mean he's gone and you know we all know he's gone so right. I think there's a there's a fear there that instead of uh, discussing things as true as they are. Maybe we can decode it, or we want we don't want to deal with it because we're afraid of of the backlash that we may get from other people that say. And he did some good things. I mean, I'm not here to mm-hmm. dispute mm-hmm. the things that he did. Uh, right. But as far as as being a Christian, I certainly would 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 tend to uh, doubt whether or not he he was committed to Christ because there were some some things that were pretty disturbing. Uh, that he believed in, in his own writings. I mean, this is these aren't going to be things that um, I I piece together, but this is from the the book that I that I that I put up there. And folks that are listening to this tonight or some other night can you can get the book for yourself, and you can read uh, the quotes, and then you can decide for yourself whether or not um, he was a believer or not. Okay. Now w- l- l- let me ask you this. Um, the give us the title of the book and give us sure. the era of what uh, of those uh, those writings, so those who are listening uh, can get a grasp on what you are referring to before you give any quotes out. Sure, the the book is called The Papers of Martin Luther King Jr. It's Volume One, Call to Serve, and the papers are from January 1929 to June 1951, uh, says Claiborne Carson is a senior editor. I've got volume two as well, So, but I, um, I volume one was, was the one that I was very concerned, and um, I can just read some of the pages. We'll get into this, but uh, if folks want to look at page 50, page 228, 229, Page 260, 262, and 272 and 273, uh, we we can kind of go over some of the things that he believed. Okay. Um, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. I'm going to be. I'm on page 50 of the book, and uh, let's see here. These were taken from two of his papers. Um, one titled How to Use the Bible in Modern Theological Construction, and there was another one, uh, The the Humanity and Divinity of of Jesus. And I'm just going to read some of this. And it says, uh, King, in his papers for Davis, reaffirmed his acceptance of critical biblical scholarship while leaving room in his perspective for some traditional Christian beliefs that could not be reconciled with scholarly findings, he agreed with the liberal view of the Bible as, and this is a quote, a portrayal of experiences of men written in particular historical situations and as a progressive revelation rather than a literal word of God. So, I mean, that's, that statement itself is is very telling uh, that mm-hmm. he did not believe that the Bible in its in its form is the literal word of God. And in in another one of his papers uh, titled "The Humanity and Divinity of Jesus," it says here he rejected literal interpretations of Christian beliefs that contradicted the law. And this is a quote: "The laws of modern science." insisting and said that beliefs the divinity of Jesus, the virgin birth, the second coming, and the bodily resurrection should be understood 
metaphorically. And that's just one page. So, so here you have um, a rejection of foundational Christian doctrine and beliefs. I mean, I I don't know, and again, I'm not here to attack uh, him. Right, right, right. I, I certainly don't know how you could say someone is a believer and them not believe all of these things. Right. So that's, 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 that's pretty heavy. Let, 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 let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question also. Now, dealing, dealing with Dr. Dr. King's life and, and legacy, um, and, you're, and like you just said, you're not, we're not attacking the man uh, or, or, or you know, trying to make him out to be a demagogue and like that. We're just dealing with information that we do have. Now, let, let me ask you this question. These are writings for those who may be, you know, who may object to this and, 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 and may want to accuse us of not bringing, bringing balance. Because uh, right now I have in my hand one of his books that he did write, uh, and this was after, uh, of course, his writings that he wrote when he was in college uh, from 1929 to 1951 during those years uh, when, this, when that volume was out. So what would you say to the person or persons that say, well, wait a minute, Miguel, that stuff was early. Those were earlier writings. Those were earlier writings. Uh, um, you know, he, maybe he changed his position. Well, it, it, maybe he changed his certainly. position, and maybe he wrote something now that, 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 that's different. You know, what, what, what would you what would you say about that? Is that I, possible I would say to happen? I, it, it's possible, but I I certainly haven't had uh, haven't come across anything that would would contradict what he wrote in these. I mean. If there are books out there, I'd be more than happy to listen to um, or, or read the book and, and, and him say, you know, I, I wrote this back, back, you know, back then, but this is what I believe now. Mm-hmm. But you've ne- you never heard that. I mean, I, I, I have to admit that some of his messages I maybe heard parts of because it was right. before my time. Um, right. But I, I don't, I don't. I haven't come across any uh, of his writings that would um, dispute what he believed here. So that that would be the question. If if those and I and I think I had read some of the comments. Well, yeah, those were things that he believed before. Okay, well, where is it that he says that he believes these things? Right. If there's evidence out there. Then present the evidence, and then you can you can toss this stuff away. Yeah, but yeah. There's, there's, there's way too much doubt. And, and, and see, I, my my question is, okay, and I'm just, I'm just I'm trying to be objective here because I have I have no personal you know issue with Dr. King, his life, and nothing like that. Now, <laughs> because we we all know that all of us have our flaws, but when you're in the public eye, uh, such as you know Dr. King or any other you know civil rights leader or a person you know that uh, may be in the public eye. Um, what what would you say regarding like for, like for instance? I'm reading this book called Strength to Love. Okay, uh, there may be uh, uh, some people may they may have this book. Uh, I bought this book a few months ago uh, when I went to one of the bookstores we were having out here. It was closed. I think Borders Books had closed, and so they're selling this book man half off. So I, I had to grab it. Um, and so one of the things he talks about. He talks about communism, okay? Now, he says this about communism. He says, the title of the, of, of his, uh, of his, of the book, or this chapter, is in chapter 10 on strength and love, and it says, how should a Christian view communism? And, he, and, in the, and in the subtext is in Amos 5, 24, let judgment roll down its waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. <clears throat> and in the book, he basically talks about this. I'm just going to read a few excerpts. Um, and then, you know, get you guys' thoughts on this. And, and for those who want to uh, chime in on this, if you believe that Dr. King was a Christian or was not a Christian, we want to hear from you tonight as well. The number is 858-365-5507. 858-365-5507 is the call-in number. Uh, we want to, you know, get your thoughts about this uh, as well because I believe that this is, I, I believe this is, this, is, this is important, man. I really do uh, because either way it go, we need to, we need to have a balance as to how we deal with uh, with issues, I think overall that 
we can run into this very dangerous uh, uh, <laughs> position of idolizing people, man. And I really believe, you know, not taking anything anything from Martin Luther King, but he has become idolized, bro. And here's why I'm saying this. Before I read the chapter in the book, here's why I'm saying this. I don't know about where you're from in, 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 in Omaha, bro, but most black churches, Baptist churches, had a day, had a time set aside to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King on Sunday. All right. Sunday is supposed to be the Lord's Day, Doc. Yep. Sunday is supposed to be the day we come to worship God. And now he's being set aside for a man. I don't really care what he did because he he takes no... He takes no precedent when it comes to us as believers coming to worship God on the Lord's Day. And I, I, I heard about churches, man, having a Martin Luther King celebration on Sunday morning. Oh yeah, that's like nationwide. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, I'm like, what, what, is, what what's up with that? And again, we're not. I'm not saying we, we, we can't, we can't, you know, thank God and and you know and, and uh, give people credit for what they do. There's a time and a place for that, but on Sunday morning. When the body of Christ comes together and we're going to devote a day and say God to decide to, to elevate a man, I'm telling you, the average black person, the average black person, bro, has more veneration toward King than any other human figure, even probably even more than Jesus Christ for the most part. Because if you talk, you start talking about Dr. King and start talking about his life or talk about the alleged affair that he has that he had, man, you 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 are already marking yourself for being public enemy number one. And I'm saying why? I agree with you. People don't want, you know people don't want to hear that. People but I'm don't saying want to hear why? That. Why? I mean, I mean uh, JFK was no different. JFK was messing around with Marilyn Monroe. Everybody knew about that. Right. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it, 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 of course, they try to keep it under wraps, but we know this. We know what happened. All right. So, if I mean, he, he has somebody on the side, either way you want to say a layer or whatever the case might be, uh, you know, he used to smoke. I'm not saying that that's a, that's a crime or a venial sin or nothing like that. But we we try so hard to try to make people look good, and that's to our own shame, to our own shame. And I'm saying we're dangerously close to idolatry when we lift up any man apart from Jesus Christ Himself. So now I'm, I'm saying that because again, the reason why I did this show, you guys, was not for the purpose of just trying to stir up mess. But we need to deal with it. It's kind of like the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's tearing up stuff and it stinks. Right. And for too long, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been said, it's been, it's been going on. Um, and I, I'm going to read another article from a, uh, from a sister that I pulled up her article. And, and all of us should know who Hank Hanegraaff is. He, uh, he used to be very popular in the, in the uh, uh, mid to late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, uh, Christian Research Institute. He used to have a bro broadcast called The Bible Answer Man. He's, he's still airing in certain stations across the, across the country, uh, but not as much, you know, um, exposure as he did before. But there was a particular sister um, that did an article on, on uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s life. And I'm going to read uh, uh, some of what she said as well. And by the way, this is from a black woman. Because see, it, 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 the reason why I'm kind of like, kind of like, you know, just kind of like just putting all these disclaimers out here, you guys, because I know how some of us think. I know how some of us think, Miguel, and Fonda. I know how some of us think. Uh, hey, that, that person must be white. Uh, Miguel, what, 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 uh, what race or nationality are you, sir? I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, so. <laughs> Puerto Rican, so you, so you, you kind of like black light. Okay, so you, you were qualified as, as a brother. You are Puerto Rican. Got everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you 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 have no you have no vested interest. You have no dog in this fight. You just no, bringing no. out information for the purpose of 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 getting a balance on this. And again, this is not to attack anybody. This is just just to give information to bring balance and objective perspective to this. I know that these what you're giving right now, Miguel, are early writings. Okay, right, earlier writings. Right. Uh, and I know I I got a brother that just uh, sent me a message. And he, he said this, he said, um, those papers that were written when he was young, entering college when he was around 15, 16 and 19 years old. He graduated from, he graduated from in high school when he was about 15 years old, and he only published three books during his lifetime and only lived to be 39. We, we got that part. The question well, is, 
but these writings here are when he was in seminary. Right. So I'm quoting I'm quoting from his papers in seminary. So mm-hmm. I mean mm-hmm. that, that that's where you're going to learn doctrine. I'm assuming. So. <laughs> Yeah, yep. and, and the seminary that he went to was a very liberal seminary. Crozer Theological Seminary was a very liberal right. seminary. Very right. liberal. So that's going to carry over into the pulpit wherever you go. Yeah. So now here's what I'm, I'm going to read out of this book. I, I want to I bring balance and even some possible tension to the discussion. It's in uh, Chapter 10, Strength to Love. He talks about communism, and, and the title of this chapter is, again, How Should a Christian View Communism? And he says this. He says, um, few issues demand a more thorough and sober discussion than, than that presented by communism. For at least three reasons, every Christian minister should feel obligated to speak to his people on this controversial theme. He says, the first reason recognizes that the widespread influence of communism has, like a mighty tidal wave, spread through Russia, China, Eastern Europe, and now even to our hemisphere. Nearly a thousand million of the peoples of the world, and it's written during that time, so probably it's greater, uh, nearly a thousand peoples, of the world believe in its teachings, many of them embracing it as a new religion to which they have surrendered completely. Such a force cannot be ignored. A second reason is that communism is the only serious rival to Christianity. Such great world religions as Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Mohammedanism are possible alternatives to Christianity. But no one conversant with the hard facts of the modern world would deny that communism is Christianity's most formidable rival. A third reason is that it is unfair and certainly unscientific to condemn a system before we know what that system teaches and why it is wrong. He says, quoting, let me state clearly the basic premise of this sermon. Now, this is a sermon that we're reading out of now. Communism and Christianity are fundamentally incompatible. A true Christian cannot be a true communist. For the two philosophies are antithetical, and all the dialectics of the logicians cannot reconcile them. End quote. Now, I read that because I want to bring balance to the discussion. So now, Miguel, in light of what you heard so far, what would be your comment regarding that? Does that, Ooh, if that's, does if that that's change? Sermon, I've never been to a church that preached a sermon like that. I mean, that... That has not, what does that have to do with with uh, with Christ? If you're behind a pulpit and you're talking about this sort of stuff, it, 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 this is more of the social gospel than the gospel, um, in in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So it would have been interesting to find out who his audience was when he did preach these sorts of sermons. Well, mostly black. But, yeah, but I mean, it goes. I mean, what type of churches are are, are you hearing this sort of thing? I mean, because yeah. what 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 um, what place? Because we're talking about. It sounds like we're talking about politics, or he was talking about politics, right? When you have a man behind the pulpit, why not talk about Christ? Why not talk about His Word? Why not talk about sin, salvation, repentance? Those are the things that should be coming from the pulpit. So, you know, it, it seems that there was another um, agenda here uh, rather than preaching the gospel. Would you? Would you? Let me, let me ask you this question. If you can chime in anytime you want, man. I'm just, I'm just kind of like just laying down the foundation. Do you? Do you? You know that the election is coming up uh, this year, and and so right. with the candidates that we have, uh, you just heard Vody Bakum endorse Ron Paul. Okay. Most of us know who Vody Bakum is. We, we 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 love the brother, but he's endorsing Ron Paul. Do you believe that uh, politics or political issues uh, have a place in the pulpit? No, never. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, that's uh, you know, that's for individuals. I mean, I. That, that's and that's the danger. I, I think that's that's been a danger for quite a while. When you have somebody that might appear to be a Christian, and you know they might show up at church, or you know all of a sudden during the election to get a certain vote, <laughs> you're, on, you're on you're on dangerous territory. 
because it doesn't become the, the focus gets off Christ, and it becomes, you know, all right, this person's running for this office, and I, I believe it happens at all levels, not just the presidency, but you know, all kinds of of, of races. I've seen it here, you know, with the governor and or senator races, and you know, they'll show the couple and their kids coming out of so and so church, and mm-hmm. the focus. Yeah, the focus should be Christ and not politics. I mean, you people can do that on their own. I mean, we don't have to tell people who to vote for. That's that should be up to up to them. Now, here's, the question, them. here's the question I'm asking, though, also because this, this is what I'm trying to make sure. Um, do you think, like, given the issues that are going on right now with the abortion and the same-sex marriage issue and all that kind of stuff, do you think that that needs to be discussed behind the pulpit, even though it may be a political? Uh, uh, issue, um, do you believe that certain political issues have a theological uh, agenda tied to it? Well, I, 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 I think that certain issues, if you're preaching on sin related to, if you're talking about same-sex marriage, homosexuality, preaching against sin should be coming from the pulpit. Okay. But it shouldn't just end there. I mean, you know, you... you, you preach about grace, you preach about repentance, you preach about Christ and what Christ did for us, but when you're trying to guide people or, for lack of a better term, manipulate people to vote for a certain candidate, I don't think that has any place in the pulpit. I agree with that. That's to- I totally agree. I, to- I totally agree with your statement on that. I, I guess my my question is, given given... <laughs> given the fact that we as Christians are to always be ready to give a defense for the hope that lies within us, uh, if an issue is so prevalent that the church needs to address it or needs to deal with it, do you believe that the preacher should be able to address that from a biblical perspective but do not, but do not give his personal uh, biases, if you will, or personal endorsement behind any individual or any particular party? Yeah, I, I think I think he should. I mean, if it's, 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 I I would think that would be a difficult thing to separate. You know, your own personal bias, but you 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 have to. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. preaching from God's word, we don't preach our opinion. We preach what God's right. word says. Totally and, agree. And, totally agree. And and we have to address those issues because they're they're go- it's part of the real world that we live in. We live okay. in a fallen, stupid world, and and there are things that we have to say that aren't going to be comfortable. Uh, they, right. We aren't always going to be liked, you know. And, and I mean, Jesus Himself guaranteed that we're going to have tribulation, so and that, that we're going to be hated because because of Him. So right. it, it shouldn't surprise us that when we do preach those things, that there are going to be most people are not going to like what we have to say. Mm-hmm. The, the, have you ever heard about Dr. Dr. King ever being uh, accused of being a communist? I, you know, I I remember hearing about it, but you know, there was something in the back of my mind. I didn't know if it was if it was racial and in motivation. Right. So, right, I remember seeing some stories quite a while ago that. You know, it, it seemed that there was uh, uh, an agenda, but I don't know. You know, in 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 the book, uh, I saw pictures of slips that money was given to him. But I, you know, those are things that I don't know. You know, I don't know if it was true. I don't know if he was being set up. But yeah, I mean, I, I remember hearing the whispers. Right. And, and now, in light of what I just read, um. In light of what I just read about him, him, him decrying against communism, um, it would seem to be, it would seem to me that he's not a communist, or yeah. it's possible he could be, and he could be saying something. I mean, we, we don't know. I, I guess that's my point that I'm making. But this is what I, this is what I am learning, and 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 I'm and I'm grabbing more understanding about Miguel is that we have to be careful about what we put in print. Because right. if we don't want it to be put out there, and if we don't want our earlier writings to be, you know, uh, uh, archived, 
then this is the kind of stuff that can come back to haunt a person's legacy or a person's name. Because right now, what, what you're reading that he wrote in the seminary days is still documented information. It's still documented. You, you got a copy of his book. You got two volumes of his, of his papers that he wrote. I have an article from another black sister uh, that basically kind of like quote what you was talking about, but she goes a little bit deeper in finding out uh, the reasons on why this information was still put out, and and and, and you'll, yeah. you'll you'll be you'll be you'll be surprised as to why, but and who did it. But my point is, we, we have we have before and after writings of this man's life. But it just seems to me that from what we've heard about Dr. King's life, it has always been positive. This dude has never done anything wrong, and I know that's not, I know that's not true. Yeah, it's not possible. I mean, uh, you know, it's not possible to be human and not not sin, not make mistakes. But you're right. I mean, I uh, people want to believe the best of of other people. You know, that's right. We want to forget bad, but just like you said, this stuff is in print, and I mean, there's no there's no denying it's in print because it's these are his papers. It's in print. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, right. They were given this person to put together, and they put them together. And whether or not they thought, you know, they would have any backlash, I don't know. But uh, then you just just a lot of things that are disconcerting when you read about somebody, you know, denying that uh, Jesus was was God or denying the virgin birth. I mean, just, those are. Those are tenets of the Christian faith, so I I just don't understand totally how you can. Yeah, totally I have agree. another uh, another quote, if I may read from the book. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. This is one, <clears throat> and his, this paper that he wrote is called "What Experiences of Christians Living in the Early Christian Century Led to the Christian Doctrines of the Divine Sonship of Jesus, the Virgin Birth." And the bodily resurrection, and it's uh, September thirteenth, um, and then it says through twenty, uh, the twenty third of November, nineteen forty nine. Mm-hmm. And here it says um, he discusses the possible influence of Greek mythology on Christian thought. <clears throat> David prods, is there any doubt about it? On balance, King shows himself willing to abandon scriptural literalism, remaining confident that this would not undermine the profound foundation of the Christian doctrines. Davis commented, well done, and he gave the paper an A. This is from page 226. And on page 227, he writes, the church called Jesus divine because they had found God in him. Now that obviously is, is contrary to, to Scripture. The church right. didn't make Jesus divine. Right. And then the the other one that I read about uh, denying uh, the virgin birth, um, that's on page 228. On page 229 of the same book, um, he denies uh, the resurrection stories, uh, the resurrection um, and these are just a few quotes um, from from the book. Um, so you can't call this guy a, a man of God. Um, I don't know what happened in his last moments of his life, but certainly from his writings, uh, you could see his denials of what Scripture teaches. And you just can't deny what he wrote. Uh, and you just There's no way around it. You can't candy coat what he believed, whether or not uh, this happened during his seminary days or later. I mean, if mm-hmm. if you want to if you want to right or wrong, then you okay, you come out publicly and say I was wrong. You know, this is what Scripture teaches. This is what I believe. I was denying Scripture, and right. and then you make it wrong. <clears throat> but that there's no evidence that he did that. Right, we have another. We have another caller, Miguel. Uh, I'm not sure you know this brother. His name is Mike Armstrong. He's a good brother. He uh, he calls our show a couple of times. Uh, 
Brother Mike, are you there? Yes, brothers. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, good to, good to have you on the show, brother. Good to have you on the show. All right. <laughs> yeah, man. What's your take Miguel, on what man, we're talking about it, tonight, man. man? Yeah, you're hitting it tonight, Miguel. I appreciate your uh, your comments tonight. Uh, you know, I was looking at that same article that you just talked about <clears throat> where uh, King basically was going through and, and saying this is how the early Christians came up with these doctrines as if, as if uh, you know, they were man-made, you know, or just a right. product of their environment. One, one thing that he said in the beginning of it uh, was he said, um, <clears throat> in order to understand the meaning and the significance of any doctrine or any creed, it's necessary to study the experiences of the individuals that produced them. And I thought that was telling uh, because it was as, as if he was saying that these, you know, these early Christians actually, they produced these as if it was out of nothing or based on some experience. Later in that paragraph, he goes down and says, all ideas, however profound or however naive, are produced by conditions and experiences that grow from the producer's environment. I had a, I had a brother a few years ago on a uh, reformed, uh, how should I say, okay, the site was called Reformed Blacks of America. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, basically yeah. told me the same thing, that, Theology was was based on one's own experiences and surroundings. And I said, no, brother, biblical theology is based on the word of God once delivered. And right. not, just a, not just based on what I think or my brother down the street thinks, because the guy down the street may have a different experience. Is his doctrine and theology just as valid as mine because his experience is different? You know, or... How should I? How do we interpret which doctrines and which theologies are actually are uh, actually truthful? If we're right. if we're taking that position, so. But when he got to the point where I was reading about the the doctrine of uh, the the bodily resurrection, it just brought me to this point of. Okay, let me go see what does the word say about the importance of this resurrection, because this is a thing where people say, well. Well, we can't just 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 uh, exclude him from the faith based on this 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 doctrine. But this is one of the few doctrines that we see explicitly taught as a doctrine of first importance in the Scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, in First Corinthians fifteen, Paul says, right. "Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which you also received, and which also you stand by, which you are also but you are saved." If you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of in first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than five hundred brethren at one time, most of whom <coughs> remain until now, but some have fall asleep. And he goes on and continues talking about Jesus appeared. Right. Let me tell you, if it was not a bodily resurrection, then how did he appear to Cephas and the twelve, and then to five hundred more, and then the other, and then the other brother? Mm -hmm. So, and, and Paul just said, if you hold fast that which that I preach to you, you understand. Right. But if, if you if you now have rejected this, then you have autumn, you have disqualified yourself from the true faith. And he goes on and says, now if Christ, verse 12, now if Christ is preached that he's been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith also is in vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You're still in your sins. Then those who also, excuse me, then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are all men to be most pity. Without the resurrection, man, there's no, there's no hope for any of us. Okay. That's why when you hear, you hear a lot of times, you hear. Uh, people talk about a, a, a cross-centered message, you know, or a cross-centered gospel, and you go and they'll go out and they'll preach the gospel or whatever. But if you leave out the resurrection, there's no power in that in that gospel. 
Right. Because if Christ right. died for the sins and didn't rise on the third day, then there's no there's, there's no power displayed there. Right. The power is in the resurrection. So for me, the one point that that he denied to me is the most critical, and that's that resurrection. He was me, raised. He was raised for our justification. Without his resurrection, we're not justified. Let, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you guys this question. What about the writings that we have now? What about the writings that we have now? Again, I got this book, Strength to Love. Okay. He talks about God. He talks about Christ. He talks about the gospel. In, in, in these in these uh, in these writings, what are, what are we to do with this? How is he defining Christ? I don't Who is this I mean, Christ? I, well, I, I don't, I'm just reading what he says here. Um, he, he talks about in, in one in one sermon. He called, he said, this sermon is called "Our God is Able," and he he quotes mm-hmm. Jude 24. Matter of fact, uh, he says. At the center of the Christian faith is the conviction that in the universe there is a God of power who is able to do exceedingly abundant things in nature and in history. This conviction is stressed over and over in the Old and New Testaments. Theologically, this affirmation is expressed in the doctrine of the omnipotence of God. The God whom we worship is not a weak and incompetent God. He is able to beat back gigantic waves of opposition and to bring low, prodigious mountains of evil. The ringing testimony of the Christian faith is that God is able, end quote. Still, I mean, from looking at his earlier writings where he describes um, Christ, as even at one point I remember reading something about Christ achieving a certain level of divinity. Um, right. I would, yep. I, would still, I would still ask the question, which Christ is he speaking of? Because nowhere right. else have I seen him explain it, you know, in a way that it would be biblical. I could, I mean, any anybody who says, I, you know, I believe in God, you know, any any false, you know, get the Mormons, they might agree with the statement that he made there. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses may agree with the statement that he made there. But who is Jesus Christ? Okay. To me, that's the question. Okay. Uh, he, he, he says this also then. Let me, let, me, let me give you some Christ here. Let me give you some Christ there. He, he talks about again in this how, how should we view communism in this sermon. He says, how many Christians are as concerned to win others to Christ? <laughs> Often we have neither zeal for Christ nor zest for his kingdom. So many Christians. Christianity is a Sunday activity having no relevancy for Monday. And a church is little more than a secular social club having a thin veneer of religiosity. Uh, Jesus is an ancient symbol <clears throat> whom we do honor the calling Christ. And yet his lordship is neither affirmed nor acknowledged by our substantive lives. Our substantive left lives, end quote. Now, I'm just, I'm just being, all I'm doing is basically giving the other side to this. That's all I'm trying to do. Right. Because I haven't right. have given my, my, my take on this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it later. I'm just trying to give the, the, the opposing side to what is being presented right now. Um, hearing, just, just reading what he's saying. Um, is it possible that he could be that he could be a Christian later on in his life, recanting his statements regarding what we have in his earlier writings, or could he be blowing smoke like the Matthew seven twenty one and twenty three cats doing? Yes, <laughs> I think it could be both. <laughs> I think it's possible. <laughs> I think it's possible that that uh, later he could have uh, changed his views and come to know the biblical Christ, or he could be blowing smoke as well. Yeah, and even what you read, it just seems rather vague. It, it, there's no, there's nothing concrete that you know that that says this is what God's word says. This is who Jesus is. It's, it's these these statements that are just there's a gray a gray area there, and that's that's a dangerous mm-hmm. thing to do when you're, when you're preaching, when you're supposed to be a preacher, when you're supposed to be behind a pulpit. There are some things you should leave absolutely no doubt about uh, who Christ is, the resurrection, his word. I mean, you have to be clear-cut with this. And and, and it may go back to his, uh, that liberal seminary, learning these sorts of things in uh, a seminary that that there isn't any um, 
certainties about this, that, or the other thing. And like I said, these things carry over. You learn these things, and then you go wherever you go preach, and you just regurgitate these sort of things. And along the way, you add your own um, views of, of the world around you, and it just becomes muddled, and it becomes uh, another gospel. You know, and, and we all we all know uh, what Paul said about preaching another gospel. So, mm-hmm. now if 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 I can if I can say something real go quick, ahead. Yeah, go ahead, I, sure, wanna, sure. go ahead. I want to say too that I don't want anyone to be discouraged. I know you made a, a disclaimer earlier as well, but I'm a product of an interracial marriage. Okay, so for me, I I, I yeah, absolutely, I absolutely um, can appreciate the humanitarian work that Dr. King did. And that just, what I'm saying today or, or any position I take has nothing to do with how I viewed him and his point in American history or world history for that matter. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for the, the, uh, the, the, the thoughts that he brought to the conscience of people about, you know, us being made in the image of God, being, being all being human beings, you know, and and, uh, and so I do appreciate what he has done, and I, so there's no it doesn't take away from what he's done, and, and that the fact that I disagree with him on theological issues. Um, yes, I think I think there's been many a, a a heathen have done a great thing in this world, and uh, as far as you know, as far as world the world is concerned, but um, you know, but I think I think the tendency we have too is. Um, when people do these things and um and they are seen as great um we often um will sanctify these folks um mm. to a point where you know we will make them it's like we want them to be uh you know uh uh what is it bastions of of the christian of the christian faith we want them to 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 be these men of God that we that we have envisioned them or idolized them to be, mm-hmm. with without regard to their theological position, and I see it all the time. We 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 get to talk about men like Joel Osteen, you know, and, and stuff like that. You know, a lot of people will disregard his his uh, his theology and say, "Well, man, I really like that guy. He makes me feel good," um. you know. And, and you know we and we put these guys on these pedestals where they don't belong, and right. so, like I said, you know when you have men of great stature like Dr. King, it's easy to do that, and I think that it's it's dangerous for us. I think it's really dangerous why why do you think why why do you think mike uh how did it get how did it get to this place to whereas you know we can't say anything negative about anybody? Uh, I'm talking about just in the, in, among among the church. I mean, particularly you know, black mm-hmm. folk. It just seems like we we just have that. There's a taboo. You know, you're marked if you say anything about Dr. King, say anything about Jesse Jackson, say anything about Al Sharpton, say anything about you know uh, Tom Joyner. I mean, all these guys, man, that basically you know, really to be honest with you, not doing anything for you, but nonetheless, well, they're black. Around. I guess that's 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 the card. That's that's, that's the card they keep. Around here, you can talk. Around here, you can talk about Jesse Jackson. <laughs> But no, <laughs> them other guys, yeah, you felt right. But no, um, I I don't know, man. It's like, you, it's like, um, it's just like, uh, I had a I had a uh, disagreement with somebody at work about about our current president, you know, President Obama, mm-hmm. and immediately, man, he was like, "Oh, you're a racist." I'm like, "Really? I'm a racist now?" You know, wow. uh, my my father's black and my mother's white, and I. I you know, everybody has, whether they admit it or not, they have some sort of prejudice, and I think right. I, I think it's, it's sin. It's sinful to be that way, but but I think everybody has that. But to to call me a racist because I disagree with the man's liberal, you know, political, uh, it, you know, uh, uh, views, you know, what I mean, to me, it's childish. And I've right. also, I've heard people say that often aggression is the sign of the weakness of one's argument. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times when people have nothing to say because they really they're confronted with truth, they'll just right. get aggressive. They'll get aggressive right. because they don't know how to yeah. defend it. 
Right. You know, because they haven't really taken the time to critically, critically think about it. And so when they're presented with it, they have no no other action but to get aggressive. And I, I just think, man, it just comes from idolizing, making idols in your heart. You know, if you, you know, people make idols. They love those idols. They worship them. And yeah. if you're going to tell me yeah. that my idol is, is not good for me, oh, man, we're going to have trouble. We're going to have problems. Right. Right. We have problems. The heart is um, See, but again, now, we're still talking about a very sensitive issue because we're talking about somebody that uh, we have a day celebrated after this man. I mean, folk get off, folk get off work uh, for this dude. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to tell me that his views may not be in line with biblical Christianity? Now, again, I'm just reading from... <laughs> Sermons that he that they that they compile in this book called Strength to Love. He talks about the gospel. He talks about Jesus Christ. He talks about evangelism. He talks about all this. My question for I had a, I had a I had a brother. He's been, he's been you know coming going back and forth with me in the chat room. Not not in this particular chat room here, but on my Facebook page. Uh, and then not not in a negative sense. But he just basically just just posing posing points and questions. My question that I asked this brother was now. Coretta Scott King, who was the widow of, of Dr. Dr. King, um, she was over his, I believe, his estate, you know, his writings, all of the stuff that he basically had. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just fast forward, and I want to read from this uh, this article that was in the Christian Research Institute. You can go online and check it out for yourself. This is, it's at www.equip.org forward slash articles forward slash assessing the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The the the, the person who wrote this article, her name is LaShawn Barber. Her name is LaShawn Barber. L A S H A W N Barber. Like Barbershop. Um she wrote an article for the Christian Research Journal. You know, we y'all y'all should know who Hank Hanegraaff is. If you don't, uh just pull up the uh, equip.org you can pull up the information there. But she wrote an article regarding uh, Dr. King's life, and actually, the first article appeared in the journal uh, of, of the Christian Research Institute back in 2010. And so, the information I'm reading here, you can pull it up yourself. So I don't want anybody thinking I'm making it up. She goes into his life history. You know how, how his name was changed and why his name was changed. His, his, his real name is, is Michael King. It's not Martin King. It's Michael King. But his name was changed because his dad changed his name to, to Martin Luther, the reformer in the 15th century. So anyway. Goes through all of that, um, his civil rights days, uh, uh, his his college days prior to that. Um, I'm reading in here, it says, after graduating from Morehouse with a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology, King entered Crozer Theological Seminary. He went on to receive a B.A. in Divinity from Crozer and a Ph.D. from Boston University. At age 25 and newly married, King and his wife, the former Coretta Scott, headed south, and he became a minister at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. In 1955, the Montgomery Improvement Association selected King to oversee the Montgomery bus boycott. Now, I could say something about that, but I'm, I'm going to back off there for a second because I don't believe that Christians should be boycotting and protesting and picketing, but I'll, I'll digress. Um, the unofficial start of the civil rights movement. The city's black citizens protested Montgomery's racial segregation policy on buses by avoiding the buses sharing rides taking taxes and walking. Um, later that year, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1957. Uh, he was a part of that. Also in the article, it says this, influenced by Mahatma Gandhi's civil disobedience campaign that ended British rule in India, King applied the techniques to his protest campaign. Now, he was an avid uh, admirer of, of Mahatma Gandhi. If you know anything about Mahatma Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi's life, it's nothing that we think it is. Nothing that we think it is. Uh, he was a violent he was a man. man of yeah, he, he, yeah, we think he was a we think he was a peace loving man. Ask his wife yeah. that. Right. Ask his wife that. He he did some very kinky stuff in his private life. He he loved giving. He loved taking enemas. I just put it like that. He loved it. And he basically oh, loved Lord. doing stuff, uh, uh, drinking urine from cows and all this other. I mean, he, 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 he a very interesting life this man had, but Dr. King uh, admired him. 
Um, he traveled to India in 1959 to study Gandhi's philosophy. Okay. Uh, King was influenced by his faith in Gandhi's techniques, writing that Christ furnished the spirit and motivation while Gandhi furnished the method. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. This is in 1959. 1959. In 1968, he went to Memphis and led a march of sanitation workers protesting low wages and poor work, working conditions. Y'all probably know a little bit more about that. Now, let me go back. Let me go a little bit to his influence and, and his his, uh, his application to what he learned. King graduated from Crowther Theological Seminary, a school that had an unorthodox reputation and liberal theological leanings. You can check that yourself. His philosophical and theological beliefs were a combination of the black church tradition in which black theology Rain. If you know anything about black theology, think about think about uh, 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 Cone, uh, 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 Marcus Garvey. All these guys, basically during those days, uh, comprised of the black liberation, black theology uh, movement. Mm -hmm. Dwight Hopkins, things like that. Yeah. Dwight Hopkins, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the article goes on further and says. Liberal theology is linked to the cultural shift toward progressivism in politics and religion in the late 19th century, a movement focused on so-called social justice. Generally, liberal theology holds that the Bible's truth claims aren't absolute. They must be based on reason and experience rather than an appeal to external authority. In other words, Scripture is authoritative concerning religious matters, but it is not authoritative concerning claims about facts. It's kind of like Todd, what you were talking about earlier, Miguel, about the Bible, if you're on the Bible. Um, conservative theology, on the other hand, holds that the Bible is the inspired, inerrant, and infallible Word of God, and its authority extends to all areas of life. Amen. Um, now, let me let me read to you what this uh, writer in this particular article uh, says here. Uh, she says. King had no qualms about preaching politics from the pulpit. After the Montgomery bus boycott, he preached an imaginary letter from the Apostle Paul to American churches. And I have that in this book right here. It's actually in the book that I'm, I'm holding in my hand right now, in this book, Strength and Love. This is a sermon that he basically wrote and it's in this book here that she, just, uh, that she just cited. While Paul's letters to the church reflected spiritual matters, King's sermon letter was a mixture of the spiritual and the political, noting that capitalism is a system in which America has to, quote-unquote, been able to do wonders, end quote. But we, miss, but we face the danger of mis, misusing capitalism, which can lead to tragic exploitation, end quote. King, King criticized the class system and implored Christians to work, quote, within the framework of democracy to bring about a better distribution of wealth, end quote, a better Distribution of wealth, a better distribution of wealth, a better distribution of wealth. Sound familiar? Sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. <laughs> all right, let me go further. Um, he was arrested in 1963. We all know the letter, the Birmingham, uh, letter from Birmingham jail, a very uh, lengthy, uh, eloquent letter that he wrote. Um, he. Um, of course, he died five years later, in 1968, uh, after his uh, uh, I, have a, I Have a Dream speech that was, uh, that was actually in 1963. Um, his, his beliefs, his beliefs. And I'm still reading from, the, from this uh, writer's article. The black church's influence on King's message is evident from his writings and in the substance and delivery of his speeches. He was also influenced by liberal theologians at Crozer and Boston. King's orthopraxy, which is correct behavior in the religious matters, at least in public, left a legacy all Christians may emulate. What about his orthodoxy, his actual beliefs? Are they compatible with, with biblical Christianity? And that's the whole purpose on why we're doing the show. Yeah. That, that's really it, because we have, we have two sets of documents. We got early writings and later writings. Would you all would you all agree with that? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Um black pastor Jerry L. Buckner wrote that orthodoxy in the black church in general isn't strong for several reasons. The most relevant reason in this context is that pastors in black churches, quote, lack a formal orthodox theological education. I like how he termed it, I like how he phrased it. He said a formal 
orthodox theological education. Not just not just formal. No, it has to be right. Yeah. It says, and many who are formally educated attended schools that espouse liberal theology. Buckner does also note that theologically conservative seminaries didn't admit black applicants, whereas liberal seminaries aggressively recruited blacks, like Dallas Seminary didn't recruit black folk. Matter of fact, black folk were not allowed to attend DTS. A lot of people don't know that. But it's true. Um, she goes on further and says, King was a precocious child to the point of verbalizing his doubts about the bodily resurrection of Christ at age 13. Recently discovered papers King wrote while at Crozer revealed that he still questioned the authenticity of such doctrines as the resurrection. So Miguel, what you're saying pretty yeah. much is on point. We're not making this stuff up. This is when he was in seminary. Now, let me fast forward to 1985. This is where it's going to get sticky, and this is where I think I'm going to spend most of my time in right here. In 1985, Coretta Scott King asked Stanford professor Claiborne Carson to become the head of the King Papers Project, tasked to publish 14 volumes of King's papers to preserve his work. The paper dates range from 1948 to 1963. Around 1996, Mrs. King gave Carson a box with papers that affirmed King's doubts about whether the Bible was literally true. Quote, King didn't believe the story of Jonah being swallowed by a whale was true, for example, or that John the Baptist actually met Jesus. Or according to text detailed in the King Papers book, King once referred to the Bible as mythological and also doubted whether Jesus was born to a virgin, Carson said, end quote. While at Crozer, King argued that the Apostles' Creed probably was influenced by Greek thought and, quote, in the minds of many sincere Christians, this creed has planted a seed of confusion, which has grown to an oak of doubt. They see this creed as incompatible with all scientific knowledge, and so they have proceeded to reject its content, end quote. In the book, What Experiences... What experiences of Christians living in the early Christian century led to the Christian doctrines of the divine sonship of Jesus, the virgin birth, and the bodily resurrection? That's the title of the book, written in 1949 when King was 20. He wrote that external evidence for the authenticity of the resurrection, quote, is found wanting, end quote. He implied that the bodily resurrection was a mythological story early Christians spread to explain quote, the faith that he could never die, end quote, and to symbolize the experiences with Christ. Without the bodily resurrection of Christ, there is no hope of salvation, and we are still in our sins, 1 Corinthians 15, 17. Based on these early papers, one could make the case King did not believe in basic tenets of the faith. One might also argue that his papers merely were theoretical exercises in which he stated and supported the thesis. Should we take into account King's relative youth at the time? If these were his beliefs, did he ever repudiate them? Perhaps examining the entirety of his work will lead Christians to a definite answer. Now, I read that because I believe that is where we are today, gentlemen. All we have is what he wrote, pre and post. But the question is, I'm asking, do we have any evidence that Dr. King recanted his position regarding the, the birth of Christ, the, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, the word of God? Do we have anything showing that, you know what, I used to believe that, I don't believe that anymore? Do we have that? Do any, does anybody have that? Because if we have it, we need to, we need to make it public. That's right. We need to produce it. I haven't seen it. needs it. to be produced, you guys. Seen it. I haven't seen it. Miguel, yeah, have you seen it? Do you have any? Do you have any any way that we can find out? <laughs> there's, there's there's nothing. Uh, this volume one is really you you quote this article quotes a lot of the quotes that that I read and that are in this book. Um, right. But yeah, there's I I have not come across um, anything that would refute what he has in these writings. What he wrote. I mean, these are his words. These are not 
uh, things taken out of context, and just like the article says, these were papers that were given <clears throat> to the person that uh, the, this Claiborne Carson, the senior editor of these volumes. Uh, so they right. were given to him, and he put them together, and this, and this is what we have. So mm -hmm. yeah, as, as, I think I think for me, with I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I cut you off there. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I, I think to me, what's what's more of a glaring omission is uh, not so much that uh, we don't have anything uh, retracting these uh, these beliefs, but to me, what's omitted is that in, in King's uh, speeches that I've ever heard or sermons, I, I never heard him really calling anybody to repentance uh, mm. and, and trusting in Christ for salvation. And if you are a minister of God, um, that's your primary goal and mission, is to preach the gospel right. of Jesus Christ. And right. that's what disturbs me about King's legacy, is that he had a platform greater than either of you or or Miguel or I would have probably uh, in our lifetime. And uh, with that platform, he did not use it um, to things that were of most eternal consequence. Um, mm -hmm. How we deal with each other in this life uh, can affect uh, uh, right. us in, eternally, but it is not the focus of... of uh, it should not be the focus of our lives as, as Christians. Uh, you know, social issues have their place, and, and I'm I'm one right. that uh, definitely agrees that there are things that I I uh, will stand up against. Uh, however, uh, the the main goal of mine is to is to uh, spread the fame of Christ and his 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 life, death, burial, and resurrection, and and and. Uh, and that he's not only that, but that uh, God's wrath is just, and He's coming back, and He's going to uh, He's going to judge the world in righteousness. So therefore, I need to right. call. We need to be calling men to repentance. So when I when I when I see that, that to me is more uh, troubling than the lack of a recantation. Is that I don't see anything in the opposite direction, uh, you know, uh, signifying the 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 importance of, of the gospel itself. Right. So, Miguel? Yeah, I know. I, I agree 100%. I, um, I can't ever recall him talking about the things that you just mentioned. And, and, and as somebody that's representing themselves to be a pastor, <clears throat> when we have those opportunities, and even us, you know, as, as believers, when... When God provides those opportunities, I want to be able to, to present the gospel to somebody. Um, not that I'm perfect, I'm far from it, but I want to give them uh, an answer, you know, an answer for that hope within me, you know, that, that there are much more important things than what's going on right now, that there are um, eternal consequences for rejecting Christ, Um and as difficult as it may be sometimes, <clears throat> um, propping people up uh, can, can do more damage to somebody's legacy than dealing with, with, with the truth. Absolutely. The truth is an easy thing to take. And I, I think also, man, again, you know, I, we, we none of us know where he is right now. I, I, I want the man to be in heaven. I want I want all people to go to heaven, but the, but the reality is, that's not, that's not going to be the case. But, right. um, you know, I would like to see, just like this just like this, uh, this writer in this article that I just read to you uh, to you guys, I would like to see some recantation. I, you, know, remind, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Luther's, Luther's life. When Luther wrote all those books and all those volumes about the Catholic Church, remember the Diet of Worms? He stood before those people, and he said, oh, these are writings. Yeah, these are mine, and you know, are you, are you going to recant these writings? If you, if you recant, we we we're going to leave you alone. Basically, are you going to recant? If you recant, then you're you're free to go. Either I can't recant unless unless you unless I am convinced by scripture or by conscience. He said, I, I can't, I cannot recant. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. So. 
this is what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm looking for something that could show that this man's life, what he said, basically is a recantation of all his writings. And I, and I'm, I'm, I, I looked at uh, some of the uh, <clears throat> some of the references while you, while you guys were talking in this same book, Strength of Love. And one of the brothers gave me a reference. He told me to look at uh, the, the sermon, uh, A Knock at Midnight. And I, and I read it. I, I read it. But here's, here's the thing. And I'm going to read the quote that he, that he gave me so that we, we can keep this thing balanced. He says, uh, Dr. King writes, we lead them, quote, we lead them to Christ who will offer them the fresh bread of life. He also makes the note that the church today is challenged to proclaim God's Son, Jesus Christ, to be the hope of men and all their complex personal and social problems. Now, what what do we do with a statement like that? Yeah, why 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 do we need help with social problems? I mean, I and and that goes back to what I said before about these these statements that are just cloudy. I mean, there's 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 a certainty there about the gospel, about sin, about repentance. Yeah. A, a lot of people can say good things about Jesus. The Mormons do. The Jehovah's Witnesses do. But the, the deeper you look into what they believe, that reveals what this is really about. It's pretty sinister. You either reject or accept the gospel. I mean, there's no in between. Yeah. And so, see, so again, I guess the issue that we're talking about is: is are there any? Is there a public statement? Is there any writings that would show that this man's views regarding what he wrote in his college days uh, is no longer uh, believed or embraced? That that's I think that's the issue. And here's the thing, also: why is it? Why is not no one talking about that? Yeah. That's what I want to know. I mean, everybody knew he was a college. Everybody knew he was a Morehouse man. Everybody knew he was an alpha. We know more about this man's fraternity than we do his faith. Yeah, you know, you know, I think that I think there's a. Um, I don't know if you if you're aware of this, Seiko or Miguel, but you know there was a point where Dr. John MacArthur, beloved, beloved, a uh, man of God, and I think actually the might be the best expositor of our of our time. Uh there was a time uh from his study in Hebrews one where he did not hold to the eternal sonship of Jesus Christ and he saw yep. it as a point in time where Christ yep. was given yep. the title of son. However he sure did. Yep. however, however wow. shortly after nineteen ninety eight <laughs> he came out publicly recanted his view yep. and, and made it known <laughs> that you know what? Here's here's what happened. This is how I came to it. But now, after further study, I don't believe that this was a time or uh, in, in uh, you know a point in time and in yes, history. Yes, exactly. That, that, He's that always happened. been. So, yeah. Right. So he came out publicly and, and, and recanted and made it known. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I taught this. You know. And so for me, it takes a great deal of humility for him to do that. But I'm, I'm yeah. encouraged to see that. Because that is a man of God understanding, hey, I don't got it all, y'all, <laughs> and I messed up. Right. But let me say he, he, he did it also before, too, Mike. You remember he also, I'm thinking, yeah. you remember, he also recanted what he thought about, uh, about uh, oh, man, oh, just that quick. He was dealing with the tribulation period uh, about mm -hmm. who the great whore Babylon was, I believe. He recanted on that. But see, that's and that's what I expect from a man of God who studies the Scripture and, and wants to and wants to teach it rightly. You know what I mean? And, and I know people can say, "Well, MacArthur wasn't faced with the challenges that 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 King was faced with," and he, and he you know, as if to say, you know, <laughs> as if to say that it, it makes an excuse for King not recanting. You know, go, right. you know exactly. that guy was. He was quite busy, I understand, <laughs> you know. But John McCarthy's yeah. been busy pastoring a church for the last forty some years. Right, right. And right. he's had we all kinds of it. challenges himself that we probably never heard about. We and that's why that man, uh, he done forgot more Bible than I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we have a call. Just a uh, caller nine seven three. Thank you for holding your call. Is live. Welcome to the broadcast. You have a comment or question about our topic tonight, Doctor King. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. how you doing? Doing great. Nine seven three. This is uh, you're, you're live. Who am I speaking with? 
Yeah, how you doing, Joe? You speaking with Omar Lyle. Hey, man, how's it going, brother? How you doing? It's going all right. Everything is all right. Um, I just want to say, uh, you know, I, I love the show, and uh, I do have, you know, respect, you know, for everybody on the show, and uh, I do like the pros and cons that you are basically, you know, displaying on the show. But I, I just want to say, because I, I said this earlier, that uh, he only basically published three books, and also right. there were like three volumes of the papers of Martin Luther King, and they were basically just a collective of works when he was basically in seminary. And right. there were also various biographies of his life. And so 39, at the age of 39, when he passed, there's not so much that you can pretty much tell. But I have to say that um, even though he passed through, you know, basically at his church, you would have to be literally there on a, on a uh, you know, during that time to actually, for him to actually express that faith. As a matter of fact, I even have three other audio cassette tapes where he actually talks about the resurrection of Christ. And these are actually... Uh, Video three, I have three tapes that no one else has, actually. Um, and one was at the Kyle Rocky Baptist Church, I believe. It's three, three other sermons. And he's leading people to Christ at the end. However, uh, his life is kind of like, uh, kind of like, sort of like vague inside of his beliefs. But no one will ever really know unless, unless God, um, unless he has to appear before God. Is what I can uh, actually say, but in right. order for him uh, to make certain statements, you would have to have uh, been a uh, been a believer in Christ. You know, um, I think that I had mentioned uh, the areas where you said that the church is, is, is challenged to proclaim God's Son Jesus Christ uh, to be the hope of men in all of their complex personal and social problems. And then he says that uh, we must lead them to Christ who will also offer them to the fresh bread of forgiveness. And now, in order for you to make a statement like that, you have to have an affirmation of, of Jesus Christ. Um, all of the other areas um, uh, regarding, like, you know, his resurrection and things like that, I think that in his sermons, in his collective sermons, that he was basically focusing on the moral of, of, of the story. Of, of what the, uh, his subject was basically about, even though you are supposed to lead people in Christ. Uh, and, and also, they were actually audio. You know, these were speeches that he, like, literally did communicate it from the pulpit. So mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're taking something from audio and you're actually putting it on paper, you don't really get mm -hmm. everything else, you know, uh, on, on the paper. You know, because um, you'll see, like, recordings and stuff like that or interlude and things like that, and it may be from the congregation members. Now, I'm not saying that he's not a Christian, and I'm not saying that he is a Christian. I think that should be placed in the hands of God at this moment. And I also don't believe that people should be worshiping him. Okay? Right. Now, you know, but, but, but Omar, you, Omar, you do know, but Omar, I'm sorry, I definitely didn't mean to interrupt, but I have to say this real quick. You do know that that is yeah. the case, though, right? That people are yeah, venerating people, this man. And people are revering him. They are worshiping him. And, and, and I can tell you that even in uh, many other denominations, like uh, even uh, watching uh, 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 countless theologians, even in the Reformed Church, they revere people like St. Augustine and they just, uh, John Calvin, and they're constantly, they don't have special days for them, but they, they, they revere them as, uh, you know, like in, 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 a, in, a, in the Catholic Church, they revere the Pope, you know. And however, in certain circles, they revere and adhere to certain individuals who held the certain biblical faith, and they will look to that individual more than they actually look to the Scriptures. And they do that within every denomination also. So I'm not trying to play sides. I hope I wasn't. Doing oh no, no, no. I, I appreciate you, man. No, I, I, this, this is what this is, this is what we do, bro. On Thursdays, this is real talk. Thursday, bro. We we we, we come yeah. on out. We come with it, bro. We don't, we don't play no game. We don't be pulling the punches, bro. You you good? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, y'all gave some very strong points. I mean, y'all y'all make some. Well, let me ask you this, then, Omar. Let me ask you this, Omar. And I'm glad I'm glad yeah. you called. Let me ask you this question: Do you believe it's possible that a person can preach a biblical gospel but still be unsaved? 
Oh, of course, you know. I do a lot of ministry myself. I've met a lot of people who preach and don't believe in the whole Bible. I, I, I've met a minister who was being licensed and ordained, believed that Christianity and Islam was the same, and was still getting in the pulpit preaching and trying to lead people to Christ at the same time. That That's nothing new to me. I know that. And people do do that, you know, and people are ordaining people. They're being licensed to preach in churches. And, and as far as, like, people like Joe Osteen, he gets up yeah. there and he's giving happy sermons, and, and people are flocking. Millions of people will flock to that, believe me, because they don't want to hear about him. Let me feel happy. <laughs> you know? Of course. I, they won't go, you know, because I was told one time, by a young lady, I don't want to hear about hell. I said, well, that's the essential piece uh, in, in the scriptures that Christ most more talked about than heaven was hell, mm-hmm. God's wrath upon man. So those right. things are true. So my thing is that we should place these things in the hand of God, but it's a good discussion to talk about, and we shouldn't be worshiping people like Dr. King. You know, I've been reading up in, on him for, for quite a while. You know, but I don't worship him or anything of that nature. Um, and I know that y'all are not trying to hang him or anything of that nature. Right, 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 I, right. I think that's yeah, I, but now, have you, let, me, let me ask you this question. I know you may have to go, but let me ask you this question, Omar. Have you, have you heard any, any other discussions, any other talk shows, any other, you know, public formats that talk about these issues regarding Dr. King without it being, without them being attacked, without them being, you know, called a sellout or, I mean, I just I did not have I just haven't heard uh, mostly in private circles. I, I did hear um, some conversations. Uh, y'all did uh, act, talk about the Bible answer man uh, before it, it, it came up with the uh, Bible answer man, but he really didn't go in depth because he's Caucasian. No, he didn't. And yeah. he was to say certain things, and they may claim him to be a racist. But uh, I, right. I've, in, in private circles, I've got into discussions where that has been said, stated before. But I can affirm that individuals like Jesse Jackson from the Rainbow Push Coalition, because you know that the rainbow represented right. the homosexual uh, lifestyle, and many people from different races and different faiths uh, uh, will follow after that. So that's very true. Even he uh, even makes the statement that he accepted homosexuality, too, and that's a part of his agenda, too. So there are a lot of people who even revere him and other leaders like Al Sharpton, who goes into the social gospel, and many other black leaders. But because they're black leaders, they feel that uh, they may be going against them and going against the movement. So I just want to leave on that note. But thank you, y'all. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. God bless you. All right, we have another caller, caller from 314. 314, your call is live. Thank you for holding. Welcome to the broadcast. you have a comment or question about our discussion regarding Dr. Martin Luther King tonight? Well, whether or not he was a Christian or not, I would say he was probably leading more to the tendency of not being one than being one. Who, who, who am I speaking with? Have, this is Pianchi calling from the Midwest. All right, how's it going, brother? Everything's doing pretty good. It's just cold here. <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> go ahead, man. What's, what's going to comment? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, if you ever t- read his dissertation, his dissertation, and he done many of them, but the one he done in uh, the 29th of November in 1949 through the 15th of February of 1950, it says the influence of the mystery religions on Christianity. And he done a very good dissertation. He knew... The I guess what we can call the day the 16 crucified Christ, and he talks about the the influence of the cult of uh, Atis. He talks about the uh, influence on Adonis on Christianity, the influence of Osiris and Isis. So he was pretty much a well of the breast. And, and looking at the uh, reading of the dissertation and also the responses by his instructors, and you know the. Uh, I guess you kind of want to say praise, but I guess you can say the thumbs up that they gave him. It was uh, very, very interesting. Uh, we had studied this a long time ago, and I just happened to bring it back up. Even the influence of Mitraism, and of course, we—I'm sure you've heard the uh, the arguments or the discussion 
on how these uh, Christ-like figures, how they predated that of the Christians' uh, Christ, and how you can find uh, parallels and even some type, uh, even some synonyms that uh, between the, uh, the last one, the last Savior, and you know those that uh, existed before him. Now you go and talking about Osiris and Isis, which was actually mm. Osiris and Set. Uh, in, in deep southern Ethiopia, it is said that these were real eyed people who did exist at one time, the three, Osiris, not Osiris, but Osiris, Set, and, and the son Haru, who was legendized, and you know, as time you know, went by, they became deified. And, uh, you know, that that goes on today. Hey, hey, did you read the story about the the Jarara people that was on the Andaman Islands uh, right off of the, right there, the, the, the islands were in the possession of India. And uh, they had an article about tourists, you know, Western tourists going into their land, but they have never had any contact with outside man. Uh, these people have never had a cold, chicken pox, mumps, and measles, unknown to them, even malaria. And, uh, Archaeologists say they were some of the first Africans to leave the continent, and their genes go back, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. But the funny thing about these people, they know nothing about Adam and Eve, don't ever recall being flooded out, and, you know, so on and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. So what would be your take, I guess, you know, with, with regard, I mean, you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've read uh, his early writings and his his, mm-hmm. uh, his post writings before he uh, was uh, was assassinated. What would you say regarding him? Just 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 as just as, in general. I mean, would you say that he um, was a Christian? If so, why? If you say he was not, if so, why not? I don't think he was Christian, and I'm gonna tell you something else about King too. I think. Many of the things when King was here, many of the crowds that he was speaking to, what he was talking about, I think went clean over many of the people's heads. I think he was a person of the past who was actually speaking for the future, because now you see people are uh, looking at what he was saying in the times that he said it. Uh, his speaking against the war, you know, I heard him, and he was also, you know, his usage of the word "I'm black and I'm proud." Uh, his uh, favoritism toward uh black power even though it was taken out of con uh out of context and he had to uh, go back and do a article to correct what people thought that they heard him say i've heard him say negroes need to stick together right after the uh, montgomery bo- uh bus boycott matter of fact we got that on tape there's a lot of things that's on tape that you never hear during his celebrations and so forth. So I think he was a person much ahead of his time. Uh, he, when he was speaking, it, the things he was speaking just not didn't register with people. But the way he spoke and, you know, the people there in attendance in the church and, and so forth, of course they cheered him on and some of the things he said. But uh, I think the overall gist of the message was way ahead of the time. I think right now we are starting to understand exactly what he's talking about, especially when he talk about the United States as being a purveyor of, uh, you know, what she does best, and that's portray imperialism and war and so forth. But we see that going on today. And I think uh, people that pay more attention to it today than they did then, because then it was something new. You know, we were just getting into this, that, and the other. We really wasn't thinking about what was going on geopolitical, like in the Vietnam and and just coming out of career and so forth. But he said a lot of things. Now, I, I think he, he said he, he did say a lot of things, bro. That uh, that did shake up a lot of uh, people in the uh, higher forms of government. You know, his his, uh, his opposition to the Vietnam War. Um, you know, social oh, injustice absolutely. and it things would, of that nature. It would them, sure. But the yeah. people that was similar at the churches before, for us, coming home and going there at uh, six o'clock and at night, listening to you know him speak and so forth. They they were more concerned on local issues uh, than many of the things that he spoke about. Right, right. Well, I definitely appreciate, man. Your, your, your. Uh, and you know something else? That, What's your name? What's your name? I'm Seco. 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 
Say, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, now, I'm a non-believer myself. I don't believe in God, Jesus, anything. So, but I can say one thing. Every now and then, somebody like him do come around and uh, seem like they, 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 they attract the attention that he attracts, attracted and gets the eyes of, uh, you know, much of the world. You know, you've seen, like you say, Gandhi, and you've seen other people in history come around and, and get that type of attention, too. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things and we can just honestly agree and just say we just don't know. Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. Now, uh, interesting you said that. Interesting that you said that. You said it was not a Christian, but you're not one yourself. But we'll, 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 we'll maybe we'll, we'll chop it up and talk about that later on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for calling. Thank you. You too. All right, we're going to move on, man. Um, I, I you know I, I got to pick up my brother. Fine, you've been quiet, and I know anytime you're quiet, Either one of two things. Either you don't want to get involved in this conversation, or you just like, man, when did this happen? Or, wow, I never knew this. So which one is it, bro? <laughs> well, you know you know me, man. Uh, I've learned my lesson. If I don't know that, I'm going to shut up. But I honestly, like I told you earlier, I'm not really a big history buff. You know, I'm just trying to kind of get into the history of the Bible because, you know, you obviously have to to really understand it. And, of course, that's interesting to me, but I've never really been big on history and, and – you know, especially, you know, politics or anything dealing with, you know, I studied, you know, Martin Luther King back in um, in uh, high school or junior high. I actually did a play, you know, we, we were in history class, so I know a little bit about some stuff, but I don't remember everything. So that's why I'm kind of quiet, man. I don't really know too, too much about, you know, what he said, what he stood for, all that good stuff. So I was more so just really listening and um, getting uh, some insight, you know, Brother Miguel and, uh, that the other brother's name was, I think it was Brother Franklin. They made some good, some very good points. And I've definitely learned a lot, man. So I, that's why I was kind of quiet. I didn't really, you know, know too, too much about this whole thing, about his writings. But I will say, you know, <clears throat> the reason people like him so much, obviously, is because that, that he was dealing with issues that, that, you know, us black folks were struggling with. He was dealing with freedom, and at that time, we wanted freedom. So, of course, if, he, if he's looked at as the icon who basically helped people to become free, of course they're going to worship him. They don't care about God because they, they're looking at Martin Luther King thinking that he was the one that saved black folks from slavery. And again, like I think Brother Franklin said, definitely not taking away from what he did. You know, I, I commend us for that and, and uh, definitely will never take that away from him. But at the same time, you know, when it comes down to scripture and biblical uh, theology and, and just salvation itself, you can't divorce, divorce the fact of if that's what he said in his writings and if all that is true, then you can't call him a Christian. You can just say he was somebody who did good things here on earth, but that doesn't mean, this, that doesn't mean anything to God in the sense of him getting saved. So he, he just he's just, you know, kind of like the Joel Osteen. As long as you're not saying anything that's going to really offend anybody, people are going to love you. People are going to love you. As long as you don't, if you don't talk about sin or if you don't talk about, um, you know, people's issues, you know, then they're going to love you. As soon as you start talking about, hey, don't do this, don't do that, then they're going to hate you. So Martin Luther King, from what I know, I never heard him, like I think the brother said earlier, I never heard him talk about anything controversial. I never heard him talk about anything from a spiritual matter as far as sin or what's right or what's wrong. So that's cool. That's why people love him, because didn't, he didn't talk about anything that would offend anybody. Right. Oh, uh, not so, on a spiritual level. Social, yeah. Spiritually, that's, I can't well, exactly. well, that's what I'm talking about, a spiritual thing. Yeah. And again, yeah. black folks love him because of what he stood for as far as the black community. So that's why, you know, you can, a black person, you can't talk about Martin Luther King for nobody black, and especially if you're white. You, 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 <laughs> you, 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 you get hungry. You try to say anything about Martin Luther King, you're white. Are uh, you racist? Uh, like Brother Franklin, he said he's from two, uh, his father's black, his mother's white, and he just yeah. agreed with something yeah, about Martin Luther King. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mike Armstrong, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Brother Armstrong. So, this, <laughs> that's all I'm going down to, man. He, 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 he hit the need of, the, of black folks at that time, and, of course, because of that, they loved him. And you can't say nothing about God because of what he did from a humanitarian level, not from a spiritual level. All right. And, again, we, you know, I, I say we, we, I, we don't know at the end of the day. We don't know for certain, but, but it, it, I, do, I do know this. If, if I die... I really hope and pray my wife don't look in my drawer 
and give all my documents, all my paperwork, all my rough drafts, all my stuff to Fonzie and tell Fonzie, yeah, man, go ahead and put this stuff together and, uh, you know, and let everybody know about my husband's work. And she don't go through this stuff. So, wait a minute, hold on. Wait a minute, my, he, my, my husband used to be a traditionist? When did, he, when did he tell me that? A traditionist is the person that believes that you always existed before you existed. But anyway. <laughs> But, uh, well, you know, if, if it's good stuff, I'm going to take it for myself, man. So you ain't got to worry about that. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it for myself. Wow. <laughs> y'all, y'all heard it here. Plagiarism. Plagiarism right there. Yeah, that, that book you wrote, that book you wrote, my... <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I would just hope, man. I mean, that's, that's the thing that's really, that's, really, that's really causing me, you guys, to, to have some pause here. Because... Why would you, why would your wife take your writings and let it be made public for the whole world to see pre seminary and then post seminary where you're doing all this stuff? You, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm like, you, you, you denial of the resurrection, denial of the virgin birth, the denial of the Bible being the sole and final authority for faith and practice. You know, I mean, come on. What I mean, who would put that information out there like that? All right. And I think that somebody, I think, yeah, Camille 41 said that. Why on earth was, would he make that public knowledge? Yeah, why, why would you make that public knowledge? That, that, I mean, if, if you know, and that, can, that can come back and bite you at the end. Because this is where I am right now. I'm like, okay, I mean, what, what do you believe? Right. Because you got here, you did not have virgin birth. I have nothing showing that you don't no more. Right. And that's the only conclusion that I can come up with. I mean, you... You're gonna you're gonna put those out because that's what you believe. I mean that's that's the only logical conclusion I, I can come up with. Why would you put something out there you didn't believe and then represent yourself to be uh, a minister? So I mean that's, that's kind of like T.D. Jakes, I guess you guys. We can put it. I'm, and I'm not trying to compare him to T.D. Jakes, but I'm talking about just the the the, the philosophy or the logic of it. If I'm a modalist or one that's Pentecostal. And on my on my website, I'm saying three manifestations of, of of the one God, okay. But then I can go to your church and preach Jesus, and preach about the Holy Spirit, and preach about God the Father. But you don't. All you got is my belief statement online. But what I'm saying here, it sounds like I believe what you believe. But what I got right here is saying three manifestations. You're a modalist over here. But you talk like a Trinitarian over here. Right. That makes any sense. Because this is what we got right here. Yeah, I, I think very, I think very um, special chameleons. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. When you don't when you don't clarify stuff, I think you you can um attract a bigger audience because nobody knows what you believe and they, they may think, All right, well he believes like I do. So <laughs> you know, uh when there's no concrete statements, it's easy to be a, a, um, a big social political figure because it's not cut and dry, right? And it attracts all you know people from all walks of life, right? We have another call, and we got about 15 minutes left on the call. Uh, caller from nine seven two six three nine. Your call is live. Thank you for calling the broadcast. You have a comment or question about our topic tonight, Doctor Luther King. Uh, yes, hi, Pastor Woods. It's Nylavette Milligan. How are you? Hi, Nylavette. How are you, sister? <laughs> I'm doing just fine. I'm doing just fine. I, I'm, I'm blessed. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that I want to thank you for doing this broadcast because there are not too many people that knew these things about Dr. King. Now, I personally had been exposed to it, but I didn't go into depth with it the way that you did. And, uh, you know, there's still some things that are not even being talked about, including the investigation that J. Edgar Hoover did on Dr. Right. King. You know, yeah, not only yeah. labeling him as a communist, but, for, right. but also having proof that he was a fornicator of white women, you know. Mm. So, mm. I mean, there's so many gray areas in the thing with right. Dr. King. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it, it just emphasizes all along that we should not follow man. We should solely follow Christ, mm -hmm. you know. 
uh, no one is without fault. You know, we all have our imperfections. We all have things that that the Lord Jesus Christ needs to deliver us from. Right. You know, but right. the unfortunate thing is, is that people would rather, let me see how I can put this, <laughs> people would rather eat spam than steak, if you know what I mean. I got you. I got you. Totally understand what you mean. <laughs> totally understand. You know, what you mean. I was I was trying to I was trying to clean that up as best I can, but uh, <laughs> I understand you mean. <laughs> that, that's just fine. That's but, just fine. Well, you got it. I, say no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and and I'll make this quick, and I'll get off the phone. But unfortunately, dead or alive. Dr. King is not the only minister that was involved in Christianity that did not accept true, authentic Christianity. He's not the only one. There's a very famous minister right now. I don't want to get in any trouble. But he is so deeply rooted in the evil of Catholicism that it's it's totally... Crazy. There have been books written about it that no one wants to read because this man is so revered all over the world. But the fact of the matter is, he does not accept Jesus Christ. He does not. You know and that for a fact. That's why I said, uh, yeah, they, they, well, I, from what I've read about this. They did some investigations about it. He has he's deeply rooted in Catholicism. Everything from that death cookie that they take as a wafer to believing that that Mary is, you know, you and I. I mean, anybody that knows a little bit about Catholicism, the Mary that they're worshiping is not the Virgin Mary. It is not okay. Which they don't have any business worshiping the Virgin Mary in the first place. Right. But Long story being short, not every preacher is a Christian. Not everyone Amen. that stands behind the pulpit right. is a Christian. Right. Just like not everybody who does gospel music <laughs> is a Christian. Uh, Tony? <laughs> well, and some other folks, okay? Oh, yeah. Not just him. I know. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, it's, I mean, I thank you for bringing this out. And and, and I'm going to say this, and I hope you understand what I'm about to say. I love the fact that you have haters for the right reason. Do you understand what I mean by that? Wow. You know what, sister? I think that just made my (laughs) night. I I, I mean, really, that, that just... Fozzie, me and me and my brother were just talking about this earlier this week. I mean, he, he and I were just Hello. talking, and uh, uh, he, a few other sisters of mine, and my wife, they all basically told me, man, we got to protect you. We got to protect you from the nonsense. We got to protect you from the foolishness, because you know right. what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You you basically drawing a lot of fire, but we don't want that fire to be unnecessary. Let it be let it be legitimate fire that you draw. And what you just said tonight just spoke volumes to me. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Well, I'm 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 trying to be hated for the right reason too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're, I think we're in good company so, because hey, no no servant is above his master. <laughs> Amen. Because there's uh I, because right now I'm reading a lot of materials that are blowing smoke through the different from religions, everything from the Masons to Jehovah Witnesses. And we're going to be talking about that very soon. And I know that there's going to be a lot of fire coming out. But I'd rather draw their fire than to draw hell fire. So I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Anyway, God bless you, men of God. Thank you, sister. God God bless you. God bless you all. I'll go ahead and, and I'll go ahead and get off the line. Thank you, sister. God bless. Thank you. You know what, man? I'm going. To, I'm going to end it on that, bro. Fonzie, uh, give me a, give me your final thoughts, bro. Give me your final thoughts, man. And we, we're going to we're going to wrap it up, man. I just thank God for what we what we have discussed so far. 
Yeah, man, I, I, just, I thought it was a great show. Again, um, you know, I was kind of silent because, you know, I'm not going to sit there and act like I know something I don't know. So I was just yeah, no, you good, man. Yeah. Uh, but, man, I, I learned some things, and I just hope and pray that at the end of the day, people get the true meaning behind what we're doing. Nobody was bashing Martin Luther King, but it's the whole fact of when you look up to people, it's very dangerous, especially if you don't even, if we're not looking up, for, looking up to them for the right reason. You know, that's, I think that's the main message, and uh, from my opinion, that's one of the main messages that, that was getting out tonight. You know, it's not just Martin Luther King. It's anybody who has done something that the world will see as, as, as a good thing, and it may have been from a worldly standpoint. But look, and when you call it, when you come into the church, if you try to bring them to Christianity and bring it to the church, you got to be very careful that you're that you're that you're looking up to these people for the right reason. You know, like people right. look up to the disciples and uh, you know all that for the right reasons because of their 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 walk with Christ. So I would just hope and pray that that's what people gain from this. You know, not just Martin Luther King again, but anybody who 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 is a, is an icon, if you will, in the world for what they've done. Just make sure that we don't take away the fact that, you know, if they're not saved, or if there's evidence that they've, they've spoken against the true doctrine of, 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 of Scripture, so that, should be a, that should be a concern for all of us, no matter who it is. Right. 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 Well, you know what? Um, you know, of course, there's going to be more that we are going to be uh, discussing and talking about, you know, in days and months to come. And this is why we do this show on Real Talk Thursday, man, because, you know, uh, a lot of things we're going to talk about, man, people don't want to touch, they don't want to hit at all. But, you know, if we're going to be men, we got to be men that are bold. Because that's one of the characteristics of a man. You're going to be bold. You have to stand alone. Yes. So being a man is about some time. Everybody ain't going to like you. You know what? It doesn't matter. Uh, if, if God is for us, he's more than the world against us. My daddy Simmons is also, if God is against you, <laughs> who could be for you? <laughs> I'm telling you, that, man, I, I'd rather have him on my side, bro, than to have him against me, man. I mean, I, I want to be on his side rather than me scratch. I want to be on his side. It ain't about him being on my side. That's Osteen theology. I want to be on Amen. his side. Okay. So, uh, hey, thank God, man, for that. Thank you, Brother Miguel, for your time, brother. Thank you for uh, uh, calling the broadcast, man, and, and, and sharing us with this information. Brother Mike, thank you again, brother. Thank you all, man. Don't be a stranger, man. Thank you all again. Amen. Bro. All right. Good night, bro. Thank thank you, night, brother. bro. All right, man, that's our show for tonight. And let's, uh, Father, could you close out in prayer, man? Could you close out in prayer before we end the show? Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord. Just thank you again for another uh, successful show. Uh, not success based on what we've done, but success because yes. uh, of your word being taught. Uh, that's what we hope and pray that our success is always based on, Lord, that you are pleased at the end of the day, at the end of these two hours, Lord, that your glory is seen. And that is what uh, all of us as Christians should base our success on. Uh, is it pleasing to you, Lord? And we hope and pray that you've been pleased tonight. We hope and pray that uh, the topic that was discussed will, will, will enlighten those who might have been in a place to where they weren't sure or might have even changed the minds of some of those, Lord, who might have had the wrong view. And, Lord, I hope, and, uh, and those who have, uh, that may not like the show, Lord, uh, let it expose their hearts so they can make themselves right with yes. you. We hope and pray, Lord God, that, that uh, every show that we uh, come before you with, Lord, that that is something that is a blessing and uh, that it will be something that we can all gain knowledge of, Lord, so that we can rent, run this race, so that we can finish the course, Lord, so that we can stand before you and you can tell us, well done, good and faithful servant, into the kingdom, Lord, and and, and be uh, filled with all the riches that, that you have promised to us for those who are faithful to yes. you. Lord, that is why we do what we do. We're not here for popularity. We're not here because we have nothing better to do, Lord. We're here because you've given us the desire to be here and let us, and you've given us a uh something precious to take care of, and that is your word. That's your gospel. And let us not play it lightly. Let us not uh, play around with the gospel, Lord. Let us teach it uh, and preach it with a, with a fire that nobody can put out, Lord. Let us preach it with a boldness, Lord, that, that will stand against anyone, any false teacher, any false religion, any false doctrine. Yes. Let us stand firm and bold in the truth because that is what we possess. It's a shame how some people have the, a false doctrine that are more bold than us in the church who, who have the truth but we're too afraid to, to speak out, Lord. We're too afraid to, to challenge others because we don't even know our own doctrine. So, Lord, please forgive us, Lord, and, and help us all get into the lab. Help us all get into the uh, our books and the, and the Bible, Lord, and let us study your word with reverence, Lord. Let us study it with, with, with passion. Let us study with a desire to learn and, and, and to teach others. And Lord, we just pray for all those who are going to sleep tonight that we will we'll all sleep restful, uh, peacefully, Lord, and that it be in your will that we wake up tomorrow, that you allow us to see another day. And if not, Lord, we know that you're sovereign, Lord God, and that, that whatever happens 
this night, Lord, that, that uh, it is in your will, Lord, but we pray and hope that you will allow us another day because we know that tomorrow's not promised. It's only by your grace and mercy. So we ask for you that now, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. That is our show. Join us again. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel, Red Talk Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Tuesday night Bible study, 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday night. And his words will be broadcast uh, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time on Sunday morning. God bless you. Have a great weekend. And whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless.